Back on Sports Bet Deep Dive. College football's here. Run down some win totals and some things we like here in a second. Uh, let's start with the Heisman odds, Teddy. You have uh, Deshaun Watson, the favorite, at plus 350. Christian McCaffrey, 5 to 1. Fournette, 7 to 1. JT Barrett, 12 to 1. Uh, maybe, su- are you surprised Watson's the favorite there? No, of course not. Because Watson's going to be on TV during primetime on the East Coast more than McCaffrey will. End of story. Look, uh, <laughs> of all the things that I wouldn't bet on, the Heisman Trophy's got to be at the top of the list. Most of the Heisman voters don't watch college football. Most of them are on the wrong side of 90. The press kits <laughs> that... They are! I'm telling you, they're ancient. I know you're right, I know. Uh, I mean, the, the press kits that the schools send out have as much to do with who gets voted on as anybody else. Nothing matters until November, and whoever's team wins a big game in November and they get 100 yards, then they win the Heisman. Uh, I mean, it's the dumbest award in all of sports. And, oh, by the way, let's list 500 candidates and take a cut out of each one. I mean, the house take on these wagers is insane. Please, you want to bet Watson, bet Watson. You want to bet McCaffrey, bet McCaffrey. But don't bet big money on this stuff. This is pizza money type of bets. This is brag to your friends kind of bets. This isn't risk any substantial portion of my bankroll. That being said, who do you like, Polly? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, McCaff- I said it yesterday. McCaffrey should have won last year, and he should win this season. But Watson, one of the best players in college football. How about how about Clemson? Uh, plus 550 to win it all. To me, their season comes down to that trip to Florida State on the road where now they're going against what should be a redshirt freshman at quarterback. If Clemson can win that game, I like their chances to make the playoff. And then you saw what they did against Alabama. That's why Watson's so good. They went up and down the field. He's throwing the walk-on wide receivers lighting up Alabama. Yeah, and, and the beautiful thing about the beautiful thing about Clemson <laughs> is that they return every yard from last year, every point from last year. On the offensive side of the football, that team is loaded. That being said, you got to play defense to win a title. There's always roadblocks. There's always someone that comes out of nowhere. There's always that one game where you're in the rain somewhere and you better make that field goal at the end because if not, your title dreams are over. And at the price, again, it all comes down to the price. Clemson is chalk. Everyone's expecting exactly what you saw last year. Every preseason prognosticator, it's so freaking boring. They're like, oh, it's going to be Oklahoma and Clemson and uh, Ohio State. You know, it changes year to year. Surprise teams come around. And, yeah, uh, Clemson deserves to be one of the favorites to win the national title. That being said, at the price being offered, I wouldn't even consider a wager on Clemson. Not even maybe. Yep. All right. A couple a couple bets that I like. We already gave out Tennessee under ten here on Sportsbet a, a few months ago. I, I don't trust yeah, Butch and, Jones and did at all. Did you see how the juice has moved? Paul, I don't mean to cut you off, but you see how yeah. the juice has moved on that Tennessee under ten. How big? How much is it now? Yeah. Uh, let's put it this way: <laughs> we gave out a good bet. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Under ten, we gave that up. Uh, I like Iowa over eight and a half, minus one sixty. Pretty good team. I'd say they're between 20 and 25 in the country, just like last year. But again, the schedule is a joke. Iowa will find a way to win at least nine games. Here in Las Vegas, UNLV with Tony Sanchez. His second year as head coach, over five, minus $1.45. Winnable games for UNLV. Jackson State, Central Michigan, Idaho, Fresno, Hawaii, Wyoming, Nevada, Reno. I think Sanchez can find a way to get to six. San Diego State, over nine and a half, minus $1.50. Phil Steele said they could be favored in every single game this year. They play nobody. San Diego State over the win total. They should at least win 10 games. And I, I, I couldn't believe this. Trubisky, Fedora, pretty good head coach. Good season last year. North Carolina plus $3 to win the Coastal Division. Odds makers have Miami as the favorite. Rick just got there. Calm down. Yeah, exactly. Georgia fans will tell betters that they might not be want to be quite so fast in putting their money on Mark Rick to actually win something. Uh, and that's a bet that makes a little bit of sense to me. North Carolina plus 300 win the coast, although I got questions about their defense. I got question marks about Trubisky. Uh, they're not. It, it, 
they deserve to be underdogs. At plus 300, there's modest, modest amount of value on North Carolina. You know, but with your win totals, what are you laying 160 with Iowa? You're laying 145 with the Rebels. You're laying 150 with San Diego State. So you go two and one, and you only make half a unit of profit. And you lock in all of that money all year long, and you can't use it for anything else. Be careful laying the big juice the last two days before kickoff. Iowa might have been a great bet at 8.5, minus 110 two months ago at minus 160. I don't like it. San Diego State might have been a great bet over 9.5, minus 110 two months ago or a month ago at minus 150. It's not nearly as good of a bet. That being said, I mean, there's not a one of them are going to disagree with you. Well, I probably will disagree with you. But I think the Mountain West is going to be better than they were last year. And to ask the Rebels to go 6-6, six and six, I mean, this isn't a program with a lot of history of winning. This is a program with no depth. I know you listed all those winnable games, but guess what? All of those teams looking at UNLV and going, that's our winnable game. So, in particular, that's the one I would probably disagree with out of the uh, four that you listed, Paul. But uh, the bottom line with all of these bets right now, you're, it's, it's hard to bet against some of these moves because they make sense, but... At this stage of the game, at this stage of the betting market, you can't be coming on and be the last guy to the party betting some of these teams over or under. Surprises and disappointments. I'll start with a surprise. Everyone talking about Stanford, UCLA, and USC, and Washington, too. How about the Pirate? I like Mike Leach. Did a great job last year with Washington State. Falk's a terrific quarterback. They could have won 10 games last year. They had Stanford beat at home. But they had some kicking issues and missed some chippy field goals. They should have won that game. I think Washington State's going to be a surprise. And who knows? Maybe they shock the world and make the Pac-12 title game. <laughs> that would shock the world, considering the state of that program just a few years ago. I'm going to call my surprise team. I'm going to go with the Minnesota Golden Gophers. This has nothing to do with how good Minnesota is. We talked a minute ago about how Iowa's schedule is really weak. Look at Minnesota's schedule. The Big Ten West is brutally bad. And any team that's halfway decent in that division is going to have success. Nebraska faces a tougher slate. Minnesota does not. Oh, and by the way, they avoid Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State out of the East. So uh, I think the Gophers are going to have a pretty good season. And, yeah, if they're 7-1, 8-0 going into November, guess what? They'll attract some national attention. Minnesota is my surprise team. And for the fourth year in a row, disappointment, USC, <laughs> dumpster fire. Pat Hayden did a lot of damage to that program. Let's see, Teddy. Ah, we interview Chris Peterson. No, no thanks. Let's hire Sark, the alcoholic. We, we can go out and give, get anybody we want. We're USC. Ah, let's promote Clay Helton because the kids like him. Horrible hire. USC will fail to live up to expectations again. Fade USC. Sad state of affairs with the Trojans. Yeah, and the Trojans doing a lot of rebuilding on the defense side of the football this season. Not reloading. That program was reloading when Pete Carroll was in charge. Now, when everyone on defense graduates, they have to rebuild. Uh, my team, I got to pick the Sooners. You know, my disappointment, you have to pick Oklahoma. You got to. There's so much love for Oklahoma. Look, the Pac-12, the Big 12 is no joke. All right, there's plenty of tough competition. You look at Oklahoma's schedule. In four of their first six games, they're going to be challenged. All right. They lose once. It's a problem. They lose twice. Now their season's ruined. Stoops with expectations. Enough said. Now, to me, that's a bet against situation and has been. They might win some games. I don't think they're going to cover a whole lot of point spreads, and that's what I'm interested in. So Oklahoma, I'll pick them as my disappointment for the 2016 college football season. Yes, yes. Excellent. How about the weekend preview show tomorrow? UCLA, A&M, Clemson, Auburn, LSU, Wisconsin, USC, Alabama, Notre Dame, Texas. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to get, we'll throw in Old Miss and Florida State as well. Can't wait for that. What a, what a weekend. That's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, if you're interested in more future book odds, check out the link uh, right here on the blur below at sportsbookreview.com slash college football future bets. You can get an idea uh, of what's out there for national championship and divisional odds. Good link below. Hey guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. So the fags, this deal starts in one week. If you think you can handicap football and beat my ass, come and play for a chance to win 50,000 big ones. Visit beattheprick.com and get ready to get steamrolled.